now in officially into budget season and one of the things that has to happen each year is that the town clerk presents the board members with the uh, tentative budget and she has done that and she has a statement that she has to read this is to certify that I have received the 2017 tentative budget and it was filed in the town clerk's office on September 30th, 2016 and copies of that budget were placed in each of the town board members' mailboxes um, on September 30th, 2016 and it is now being formally presented to them tonight at tonight's meeting. Thank you, Ken. Uh, it's an awful lot of work to pull together a budget every year. It's done by our department heads, and the majority of the actual work is done by Ed Mongold. Ed, thanks again for doing such a great job. The budget which I just gave to Kathy is another good budget for the Wefield taxpayers. It's not a perfect budget. Expenses continue to go up each year, but revenues have not been keeping pace. They don't necessarily go up to match the expenses, specifically sales tax. Last year, and now again this year, sales tax has actually gone down from the prior year. And it's the first time in recent memory that that's happened. Uh, for 2016, we budgeted the exact amount we did in 2015, and we're not even going to realize that amount. Some expenses have also gone up, the primary one being personnel costs at $155,000 and change. Health insurance, we're expecting that to go up by about $25,000. Uh, we don't know yet. We haven't met with our uh, our counselor. She's coming in uh, in a week, and we'll know a little more then, but we don't know where we're going to be for sure. Uh, we've had to allow some money for ash borer. The ash borer has been killing an awful lot of trees in town. Paul has to get those trees along the road cut down. I put $25,000 in there for that. Uh, we also added about $22,000 to cover increases in fire district expenses. Uh, the library expense is going up a minimal amount. The one library is exactly the same. The others did go up a little. Uh, one of the things that did happen is our highway superintendent has some equipment that he considers aging and asked for quite a bit of money, additional money for highway. In the budget as I'm presenting it, I've taken most of that out and brought it back down to last year's level. Uh, there's plenty of time for Paul to address the board and the public and see if we are willing to give him more money for additional equipment or whether we leave it where it is in this budget. Uh, fortunately, we do have enough fund balance on hand to be able to deal with these extra costs without any significant increases in tax. So if passed as is, I believe we do have a good budget for the taxpayers maintaining services at existing levels. Since our, I consider our existing program to be the right program for Wheatfield, I think it's good news to the taxpayers. Uh, I do have a budget schedule prepared. I've given it to the board. I think that's something we probably need to pass this evening because there's a couple of special meetings in there. Uh, but that doesn't have to be done at this moment in time. So I guess we're ready for public input, Brian. Good evening. Um, I have a few questions and I'd just like to rattle them off and then you can answer in my time. Um, Quasar, um, as I understand it, the, um, when they filed a motion to appeal that it was just a placeholder that the official appeal hadn't been filed, I wondered if that had been filed and if there's any word from Ag and Markets. That's question one. Um, question two, Kruger Road. Um, I see Kruger Road, Norman Drive. Um, I see that the um, street light is on the agenda for tonight. And I'm wondering, um, as I read through meeting minutes, um, it was originally in July of 2013, actually, or 2015, July 13, 2015, that a motion was made to ask the state to move that. And then um, a letter was written August 21, 2015, um, to the state. And then finally, um, either they didn't, res they didn't respond, and then we followed up, and now here we are a year later, a little over a year later, um, and it's getting taken care of. I just wondered if there have been systems put in place, like as ticklers, so these kind of things don't slide through again. 
Um, my third question is the fence. Um, it was eight months ago. It was at the February 22nd meeting that Senator Ort um, presented, said that he has monies to fund a grant for the fence around Niagara Sanitation Landfill. And I think at the last meeting that I attended, it was going to be applied for. I'm wondering if the grant has been requested or submitted, and will we have to wait for the grant money to come in before the fence is um, received, before the grant, before the fence is um, erected. The next thing is I just wanted to ask if the, um, if the, we, on July 27, 2015, um, you approved a bond for $350,000 for the design of the bike path, and then 346635 went to Wendell to design that path. I'm just wondering, was that to design the entire path or just that one section? And then um, my last question is regarding um, New York state laws. Under the town law section of New York State Law, Article 16, Part 272A states that um, all land use regulations must be in accordance with the comprehensive plan. And I'm just wondering if we know if that is the case here or if we have any gaps. So those are my questions. Well, I know I've <laughs> I missed a few uh, meetings. Ag and markets, we have. There has been some recent research, a statement made by a gentleman named Freed, and we have had our consulting attorney send a letter under my name to Ag and Markets along with that research, and we were six or seven pages worth of research, and that just went out uh, maybe maybe today, maybe Friday. Okay. I think I signed it Friday. All right. Uh, and that supports our case with Ag and Markets. Quasar, the, the lawsuit. Uh, yeah, they filed that notice of appeal, and they filed that within the time period. Then uh, after they filed the notice of appeal, they had a statutory period of a couple of months to perfect the appeal and answer get the record. And obviously, it's not so much from that. Um, as far as their progress on that... Um, are you on? Not on. I hope everyone heard me. Sorry about that. But as far as that time period to get the appeal, it's called perfecting the appeal. They have not perfected it yet, or at least I have not heard okay. they perfected it. So our attorneys do not respond until they've perfected. They okay. file a brief with the uh, appellate division, and we review that brief and respond in kind. And um, we have not seen that yet, at least I haven't seen it yet. Okay. Kruger and Norman, the light. Yes, it was a little over a year ago that I sent the original letter. I sent that to the gentleman at DOT mm -hmm. and frankly put it aside and didn't have a tickler. Uh, they actually responded at that time, but they responded to the highway department. The highway assumed that I had notice and nothing happened to it. Sat there for a little over a year. We sent off again and their answer is it's now been 10 years since the project was done and they're not going to open up the project to move a, a street light. So they say it's our problem. We do have a motion on the board tonight as to whether the board wants to pull the light down or not, and a secondary motion as to whether we want to put up a new light mm -hmm. or not, and that will come up later. Defense on the landfill, I'm going to ask Bernie to answer this one. <laughs> he just got papers on that today. It's, when you get into these grant situations, they're really discouraging. They're very involved. Bernie, can you respond to that? next year out of next year's granting to try and pay for the other half of the fence because it's only going to be half covered by the by the bond by the that money that Senator Ort uh, said he had available. So the total cost is about 150 is that what you're saying? I think the it was 152 was your last estimate as I recall. All right. Uh, bond the on I River can't. Road. We did talk on River Road that we were going to do the full design. Okay. We've reached an impasse where we're trying to figure out how we can do it because the cost has just skyrocketed because of the nature of a bridge to cross over the top of the railroad. So 
we are having we're going to have another meeting with the residents in that area to discuss other possibilities and see what their ideas are uh, that's coming up uh, Larry well, October 25th we'll meet with them and we'll that'll be the next step right now we're sort of half proceeding with the first phase we do have money enough to uh, move the first phase along and unless we can come to a resolution as to where we're going to go we will probably not do the second phase at this time so is the 346 was for the full design though that was intended to be for the full design. okay I, I get that there were hiccups but I just wondered if that that was for the whole um, the whole trail okay Article 16.272A, what was that again? It is, um, it basically states that all um, town land use regulations must be in accordance, in accordance with our adopted comprehensive plan. So basically um, it states that there can't be any gaps between your zoning and your comprehensive plan. So I just wondered if, if we feel that we have that all buttoned up. turn that one over to Matt. Well, uh, with regard to the comprehensive plan, the, the planning board moves it on with what they do. <laughs> They try to follow that comprehensive plan between the plan and the zoning. And as far as I'm aware, there's a really comprehensive plan with the zoning that we have to follow to. Okay. And they try to act in accordance with that. Um, and I believe that they. Okay. And they're independent from us on this particular board, but they, they've been acting, and that's part of their job in regard to projects and things that the pay zoning changes. So if there is anything that they find that there's a gap, could there be a zoning change if it was pointed out? That there was a gap between the comprehensive plan and zoning? Yeah, I mean, I okay. don't know of any existing now, but yes, I mean, they can make a recommendation just like there have been recommendations coming for the airport overlay we've done, yeah. the recommendations for rezoning around the boulevard. And part of that in, in, in the comprehensive plan does talk about the, the nature of the boulevard and, and, the, and the amount of traffic flow and that it's it does, yeah. with this motion. But there are um, certain pockets with residential there that even if the comprehensive plan indicates that that could be commercial, it's, 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 you can't always mm -hmm. make it exactly solid, um, but um, they are trying to be out in congruence with it, and, and there have been zoning changes, and we've, um, we've had one or two over the past six, eight months um, along the boulevard. And okay, so it is possible just to pull into the line if there's anything as yeah, we're trying to do projects. Sure the comprehensive plan is a guideline or a goal to, to reach, and we try to follow that particular. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you. Appreciate it all. Brian? Anybody wish to speak on any subject? Okay. If not, we'll move along. Uh, we do have a set of min minutes, gentlemen. It's from the September 12th meeting. Does someone want to move that in for approval? Moved by Larry. Do we have a second? A second. Second by Randy. Anything that anybody wishes to change? If not, then all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That's approved. We do have a bill pay. It's three hundred and forty one thousand one hundred sixty five dollars and twelve cents. The voucher numbers are twenty sixteen, eighteen thirty five through nineteen seventy one. Uh, I need a motion to be able to pay these bills. So moved. Can I hear a second? Second by Art. Any bills anybody wishes to hold? All in favor of paying these bills? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That's approved. Paul Sigmund, Highway. Um, that road bridge is pretty much, I would say, 
played the tour plant, but they stopped once they got to the press. Um, TFX, I just spent four months playing the contract for headquarters, and I probably got about 15 phone calls. I never got any spots. Finally, I got a local one who talked to that gentleman who took Malik to the back and did that. Um, as far as the tracks going towards, they're not connected to the main line anymore. All that's gone, and actually, most every <coughs> truck was ripped off. The place has been wildly covered in coal. When did it actually be our problem up to the point where where? Yeah, which would be 10 feet into the 10 or 15 feet into the property toward the fence, right? The sewer plant has never used that. They have no need for it. Any questions for Paul? Paul, I have one question. It looks like the salt barn is full. Have we taken everything from last year that we were obligated to take? With another mild winter, would we be able to cut down at all on that salt? Or do, are we, I mean, okay. Anything else for Paul? Rich Donner? Water and sewer? Yeah, if anybody was at the last meeting, they saw we were a little busy down the road. Uh, yep. A little water leaked at the corner. It was actually found by somebody calling me to complain that it was an odor. And uh, while they were out, they looked in a receiver along the road and noticed there was a lot of water. Thank you. Anything for Rich? Yeah. If not, Mike is out of town this week. Um, building inspector, Mike Clark. You sent me an email just this evening having to do with work in this building. Are we proceeding with any of that, or are you waiting for us to t take action on that?
While we're still in the meeting, can you chase downstairs and get a copy of that and pass out for the board? We may be able to take that action. If you would, please. And then we might be able to take care of that tonight. Oh, wait before you go, Mike. <coughs> I had a question. Uh, today's uh, Buffalo News had uh, an article in here about the wheat field. I didn't say huh? I didn't pull it. Oh, yeah, you're quoted. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, uh, sports domes delayed. I just want to make sure that this delay is all on them. That you know we're, we're assisting our industries and developers with putting things in and revitalizing that mall. Is, can you give us an update? So what what is the delay? They want the two smaller ones. Two smaller, the larger, because of the wind loads, snow loads, the wind feeds, etc. They suggest that we build two separate structures. Mm -hmm. And for the project later in the season, they thought it would not be conducive to start building it in fall, in the conditions, start the spring, so that we can manufacture the snow. Okay. Whatever we can do to expedite them. You know. Oh, no, we would not. Okay. Have they applied for the permits yet, Mike? They haven't. They haven't applied for any permitting. How long do they have before the planning board approval runs out and they have to go back to it? Thank you, Mike. Bridget, anything going on with assessment? Do you have it up on your section in the website, that yeah. comment about the 2015? Good. Thank you. Arlene. i got to remember to wear a short sleeve shirt there, please. Got a dance coming up soon. Do you know when? So it's next weekend. So a week from this weekend. Very good. Thank you. I don't remember. Dave from uh, GHD, Paul mentioned that where we stand on the bridges, anything you want to add to that or anything else you have? Okay. I had a question for Dave on, on the Lemke Road Bridge. Go ahead. Dave, we were over there, and it, I mean, it looks like it's pretty much done. you got the guardrails up. Yeah. On the inside of the guardrails, about 16 inches in, there's a, like a piece of concrete sticking up on both sides. If one of the cars in the town hits it, the town's going to get sued. Do you plan on removing that? 
there's like a there's like the guardrail on both sides on the on the edge of the blacktop. Then about 16 inches in on both sides of the guard guardrail, there's like yeah, it could be a curve. Yeah, it's like curve. That yeah. if somebody hits it, the town's going to get sued. And if and if that's attached to the to the bridge structure itself, I'm sure the plows are going to nail it. What's it going to do to the bridge? Shouldn't the guardrails have been there so they don't get hit? And it's going to be tough when one of the residents smacks into that. It's behind the guardrail. No, it's it's right in the road. It's on the road side of the guardrail. Behind the inside of the guardrails, what uh, what disturbed me? They're they're actually. The guardrails here, and they're, they're towards the middle of the road, and they're this high. Somebody comes cruising through there one one evening when it's foggy or rainy, and nails it. We're going to get sued for it. It's still on the inside of the curb. Or the uh, guardrail. I mean, is that the way you designed it? You guys used to have to do the new technology. Nice and straight. <laughs> about that far from the guardrail. Larry and I were there today. We actually got a tape out of the back of my truck and measured it on both sides. It's almost 16, 14 inches on one side, 16 on the other, on the inside of the guardrail. I mean, it's your design. I guess maybe they'll sue you then when something happens. Or if the plow hits it and it uh, wrecks the bridge or something because it's, are you going to stand up, stand the uh, Behind fixing the bridge, because that's part of the bridge, right? So if the plow smacks it, they can't see it, and it cracks the bridge or something. Is that no? You guys be aware. Go out and take a look at it. Lay eyes on it so that we feel better, I guess. Maybe we're not explaining it quite right. You look at it and it looks good to you? Fine. Okay, okay. Thank you, Dave. Uh, next would be Tim from Wendell. Thank you. Uh, we had hoped this evening to have on our agenda a recommendation of award for our 2016 INI corrective work that we've had out to bid for the past couple of weeks. But those bids were due, or quotes I should say, were due last Tuesday, and we only had one valid quote come in. So we, uh, based on past practices, uh, we're not planning on recommending an award for just the one quote this evening, uh, but rather we have a motion in the packet this evening that uh, uh, is requesting to go out and continue the quote process for that for an extended, uh, a little bit more time, get some more quotes for that. 
in hopes that we can get at least two in for that. So that's really all we have on our agenda this evening. Okay, so you're not looking for a motion to do that, you just want approval to get well, more, uh, uh, to the, reject the bid? Correct. The, the motion would be, since only one quote was received, mm -hmm. um, to have authorization from the board to solic solicit additional quotes um, with a different time, mm -hmm. with a new deadline for them. Okay. So, Very good. Any Anything questions? Anything else for Tim? Thank you, Tim. Thank you. Uh, we'll move on to motions, please. Okay, first motion is the one mentioned uh, by Tim from Wendell. Uh, since only one valid quote was previously received, Wendell is authorized to solicit additional quotes with a new deadline for relining of the Moyer Road pump station, wet well, and a sanitary sewer manhole on Plaza Drive. I'll make that motion, but shouldn't we reject the one bid that you it's not spelled out in there? We should reject the one bid that you did receive. In that motion, we, we can add that. We can add the rejection of uh, bid received and send it out for rebid. So after authorized, and it was authorized to reject the one bid yes. and to solicit additional, additional, and and from the original uh, uh, bidder. And then it's Randy's motion, he has to accept that. Yes. Larry? Okay, so we have a motion and second. Anything further on the question? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That is approved. Okay, next motion from the Water and Sewer Department um, to authorize the purchase of a Ford F-250 4x4 pickup from Med Schultz Ford of Jamestown under the Chautauqua County bid pricing for the amount of $25,093.48 cost to be split between equally between Water and Sewer Department's 2016 budget. I'll go ahead and make that motion. I'll, uh, I'll second it. I don't know if you want to make it a two-part. We're going to take the old owner. I see the motion. Yep, next. Okay. Time. I'll second it. Okay, moved and seconded. Anything further on the question? R is that already tricked out, Rich, or do you still have to add to that later on? Anything further? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? And that's approved. <coughs> Next motion again from Water and Sewer Department to declare a 1991 GMC pickup utilized by Water and Sewer Department as surplus due to its replacement with the purchase of a new pickup and to place that surplus item on Auctions International subject to uh, board approval of the auction bid amount. So moved. Moved by Gill, second by Larry. Anything on the question? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? That's approved. Next motion to authorize the town supervisor to issue a letter in support of the Niagara Gospel Rescue Missions grant application to obtain funding to renovate former YMCA building on Portage Road, Niagara Falls. I'll make that motion. I'll second. Second by Randy. Uh, it's, it's a very interesting project. The old YMCA was literally given over to this mission, but in order for them to turn it into uh, housing that they're looking for, for people that need it, for a women's shelter and an overnight shelter for those that need something, they're looking for grant money, and I think it's a great project. Anything on the question? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? That's approved. <coughs> Next motion to award GHD Consulting Services, Inc. the Construction Contract Administration and Resident Inspection Services in connection with the rehabilitation of the pump station at Jago Road and Rebecca Drive. Uh, GHD's proposal indicates it can complete the scope of services associated with Task 3 for a lump sum of $7,000 and Task 4 for the not-to-exceed fee of $16,200 based on the anticipated 
construction duration of 4.5 weeks for a total estimated fee of $23,200. The said resolution authorizes the town supervisor and the intern to set agreement immediately so construction may begin with the previously awarded construction contract to SPC Construction. Gentlemen? I'll make that motion. Moved by Randy. Do we have a second? So moved. Second by Art. I did ask Rich if that's something that we could do in-house. Do we have somebody who has the capabilities? And there are certain parts of that job that Rich doesn't feel that we have the ability to be able to be our own clerk of the work. So I guess we're obligated to allow the engineer to take care of this. Anything further? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? That's approved. Okay, next motion is, I suppose, optional with regard to the street light at Niagara Falls Boulevard on removal, but I will read the motion first with regard to removal of the existing. Motion to authorize the permanent removal of light post number 3196 Niagara Falls Boulevard at a cost of $321.22 in termination fee and an estimated $914.15 in removal charge and authorizes the town supervisor to sign any required documents for removal. This motion is in association with the replacement of said light post at a more optimum position for the intersection of Kruger Road and Niagara Falls Boulevard. Yeah, this is an interesting question because it is actually lighting part of the boulevard, but it's right at the end of the gentleman's driveway, and it's in an area that's already fairly light, and if we put another light at the next corner, there's really no need for it. It hurts a little now to take it out, but in the long haul when you're paying $350 or $400 a year for service with that light, it's probably justified to remove it unless you think we need that extra light on the boulevard. With that said, does anybody wish to make that motion? How much are you like going with your LED? Are they like $120 or $130 a year? That's what we were told with this next motion. I thought the older lights were like around $180 or something. So much depends upon how it's mounted and how far it is away from an electrical source. It's hard to say. Most of them are in about the $25 to $30 range per month, which is $350, $360 a year. Eventually, you're either going to pull it down. If it's too expensive to pull down now and you want to leave it there, that's our choice. Could we just have them disconnect it and leave it there and save the $900? Didn't ask the question, Bill. Then it wouldn't cost us anything if we just disconnected it. Perhaps. I don't know if they would do that or not. I did not ask the question. Wait for a car to hit it, then you're going to take it down by insurance. There you go. I don't know. Are you volunteering? No. Take one of your big trucks and do it. You could just terminate, get the $300 pre-formulated termination fee without needing to do that? Is there a chance of getting an LED light in the existing light to get our costs down? We've been asked if we want to look at LEDs throughout the entire town, but that would be quite the project. I thought the new light was going to be LED. How about the old one? That's up to us. In the motion for the new one, I've left an option if you want to go with LED or the old style. We're dealing with the first motion having to pull down. If we want to hold off, there's no reason to rush it. Why don't we do it the other way around? Why don't we put the new one up and then you could disconnect this in the meantime and then take the old one out after you've got light. Okay, so we can just hold off on this for now? That's my thinking. I mean, why not use the light that's there, put the new one in, make sure that works, and then disconnect the old one. Okay, then if anybody wants to make that motion, now's the time. Otherwise, we'll hold off. Okay, so let's move on. Okay, the next motion is regarding the installation of the new light. Whereas during the prior reconstruction, the Department of Transportation stayed in North Street Light, the prior corner of Kruger Road and Niagara Falls Boulevard was not moved, and as such, the prior existing light post is not in the optimal position to provide lighting at said intersection. And whereas the New York State Department of Transportation indicates at this time they have no plans for moving or supplementing said street light, whereas the supervisor in town board of Wheatfield desired to improve 
lighting at said intersection now therefore be it resolved that is approved and the town site supervisors authorized to enter into an agreement with national grid to provide for street light relocation uh, or the supplementation of a new street light at the corner of the current inter intersection of Kruger Road and Niagara Falls Boulevard and it is authorized that said light be of a high pressure sodium or LED light the board to choose at this point and the supervisor is authorized to execute any agreements necessitating light pole installation. Okay, does anybody wish to make the motion to add a light at that corner? I'll second. Okay, so we're looking at the LED version. Anything further on the question? Yeah, a question on the new light that's being put up. Yep. Uh, does it have to be in compliance with uh, New York State DOT rules and regulations? I think the answer is yes, and I'm pretty sure that the they will, grid would probably have a pretty good They will put take care of it. Okay. I want to make sure it's in compliance. Okay. Thank you. Um, all right. All in favor of putting an LED light at that intersection signify by saying aye. 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 I'm opposed. So it's four to one, Captain. Okay, Local Development Corporation. Uh, yes, uh, next uh, motion. Um, to accept and authorize the town supervisor to enter into the updated and revised grant agreement between the town of Wheatfield and the Wheatfield Local Development Corporation regarding the grant of assistance to Jacob Ladder LLC to expand its operations in the town. That updated grant agreement is required by the state granting agencies and, and previously approved by the Wheatfield Local Development Corporation. Does anybody wish to make that motion? Probably can't be Larry or me. So moved. Moved by Randy. Do we have a second? <coughs> Need a second to proceed, Ken. No. This is primarily just a little bit of wording that was recommended by Chuck Bell to make it more to the controller's wishes. So the actual change was minor. Uh, changes were minor. There were several, three or four of them on there. Uh, yes. Chuck Bell is now working on behalf of the LDC. Uh, Bobby O'Toole is the attorney for the LDC, and they worked out these differences. I think you had the opportunity to review it first. I, I did review it, and it is just uh, minor changes. I did uh, put in some language that I thought necessary for the town, but the changes were simply to make it more palatable and agreeable to the uh, state comptroller and all the agencies uh, providing the grant funding. OCR. Okay, that being said, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? That's approved. Okay, uh, next motion, um, whereas the town board desires to pursue fund opportunities to complete the Kruger Road sidewalk project. This is a construction project that will construct the sidewalk along Kruger Road that will connect Niagara Falls Boulevard to Ward Road and all of its re residential arteries. And whereas the town board desires to provide this type of facility to residents at the lowest possible cost to the town and the town taxpayers. And whereas the town board desires to apply for financial assistance from the TAP Transportation Alternative Program and whereas the town board commits to providing the required local matching funds to ensure timely implementation of the proposed project and therefore be it resolved the town board authorizes and submits an application for the New York State Department of Transportation TAP Transportation Alternative Program Fund for the Kruger Road Sidewalk Project in the amount of $945,000 and be it further resolved that upon approval of the application for financial assistance the town make available $189,000, 20% in matching funds to satisfy the requirements of the funding program and be it further resolved that the town board authorizes the supervisor to sign all documents and agreements related to the TAP Transportation Alternative Program application and be it resolved that Robert Cliff, the supervisor of the town of Wheatfield, is hereby authorized and directed to file an application for funds from the New York State Department of Transportation, Transportation Alternative Program, an amount no less than 20% of the approved funding and upon state approval of said request to enter into and execute a project agreement with the State of New York for such financial assistance to the Town of Wheatfield for the proposed Wheatfield-Kruger Road Sidewalk Project. 
Okay, does anybody wish to make this motion? I've got a question. Go ahead. Uh, now, on this 189000 that that we're going to end up owing on it, I think we need to let the residents sort of know that it's going to be bore by the residents in that area, correct? I think that's going to be necessary. We don't have to do that at this point. If we don't get the grant, it's a moot question. If we do get the grant, we still have the chance to revisit that question. But there's a good possibility that residents on Cougar Road are going to have to pick up $189,000. <coughs> That's yet to be determined. Just so there's no surprises down the road. Should this motion be reworded just a little bit so the uh, second resolve where it says the town, so we do the town war rather than make it available? I mean, <coughs> so that we, we don't know right now, but uh, if the board is leaning towards you know, letting the have to pick up that responsibility, this, this resolution doesn't say that. I mean, should we put the either or in this resolution? It would still be the town having to make the payments. How we collect that money is up to us and the people in that area at the time, but we would end up having to pay the bill every year, or the bill in this case. Even if it's a special district? We still pay for the special district. I think the, m the money is collected from the special district. It comes to the town, and then... Uh, the town makes the payment. The town makes the payment. So, I mean, it, it could be added, but ultimately it is the, the town makes available. It is up to the town to determine how we're going to make it available down the road. I'll go ahead and make the motion. To proceed, we need a second. We can't, uh, we can't go any farther with the application for assistance unless we approve this now or very soon. Right? Bernie, it has to pretty much be tonight. Is there anybody who wish to second? I'll, I'll second. Okay, anything further on the question? Uh, this is just applying for the grant. The acceptance of the grant is going to is that going to be paperwork? Is that going to require additional board approval? And before we proceed, then we're going to need to know more specifics on whether you know a sidewalk district is being formed or and how long does it take to form a sidewalk district? Takes a while. Do you have to have a public meeting? Well, what's a while? It's going to take at least several months. Yeah. At least. So if we receive this, are we going to have? Well, it room it also that? takes several months to get a contract back from the state, so you have plenty of time to do it. If So once we get awarded, would they, they can wait three or four more months to see whether a sidewalk district is formed? They won't. It's up to us. Okay. I'm not against putting the sidewalk in, you know, from, but I think we owe it to the residents on Kruger Road at some point to send them a letter or a survey telling them what their part of this is going to be. Okay. And probably letting them know about the maintenance of it and uh, plowing it and stuff too in the winter. At this point, Debbie, you have something to add to this? I don't believe any of the town's money has been used for it. It will be who pays for the engineer. That is our tax money paid for the engineer. It's all grant money. It's all grant money. All grant money. That's, that's, grant that's money. one of, that's actually a different issue, Debbie, but okay. we are seeking, we have a, about $1.2 million of grant money already for the grant money. There is some match involved, which we're getting from the county. 
Our goal is to have no taxpayer money to be to put it in. <coughs> That's what put the thing on hold for at least phase two was the, the fact that it just got crazy. Some of what we're being told on the bike path, I don't want to get off subject because we're talking about a sidewalk now, but we're being told through the, some of the state officials that if after this is designed, that the state may come up and any of the bill to put the trail in. Once we once we get the design done, which we have the, the grant money to do the design, you know, our grant writer, you know, Bernie has told us that he's been approached, right Bernie or no? Right. That the state has interest in completing this trail so that it's not on the backs of the taxpayers that we feel. Thank you, Debbie. Uh, let's go back to where we were. We have a motion, we have a second. Anything further on the question about putting in this application? If there is nothing further, all in favor of putting in the application signify by saying aye. 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 Are there any opposed? It is passed. Uh, next motion from the <coughs> Highway Department and Town Attorney to authorize the Highway Superintendent to sign and enter into an agreement with New York State Department of Transportation regarding shared services for a period of two years. Do we have a motion? So moved. Second. Moved by Randy, second by Gill. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? That's approved. Next motion from the Firearm Permit Review Board uh, to approve the firearm discharge permit renewals for the individuals shown on the attached list that was submitted by the Firearms Review Permit Review Board as of September 11, 2016. Anybody? Moved by Art. Second by Larry. Anything on the question? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That's approved. Next motion again from the Fire and Review Permit uh, Review Board and Town Attorney to accept the resignation of Don McSwan from his position on the Firearms Review Permit Review Board and to appoint Richard Jackman to, full, to fulfill said vacated position effective immediately for the remainder of the term of said vacated position. I'll go ahead and make this motion with uh, great thanks for Don McSwan for his many years of service on the Fire Re Review Board without any compensation. Uh, he even rebuilt it when we were in need of uh, new leadership and did a great job. We do need a second. Second. Second by Gil. Any second. Go ahead. I don't, uh, I don't doubt that uh, Richard Jackson was very qualified, but I don't know him. I've never heard his name. So I was in the way he was coming to be. For him to I think the chair is uh, Greg Lloyd. Okay. Yeah, Greg Lloyd's the chair, so he'd just be a member. Okay. But I think that's all Ms. Kwan was, was uh, a member. Yeah, of Don had withdrawn as the chair sometime ago. Okay. okay, anything further? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? That's approved. Next motion from the Recreation Department to hire Scott Cooper as a boys basketball instructor pursuant to the terms and rate of pay as indicated in job specifications. Set appointment subject to Human Resource Department approval and Niagara County Sheriff's Department criminal background check. So moved. Okay. Moved by Gill, second by Art. Anything on the question? All in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> Any opposed? That's approved. Next motion from the uh, Budget Director. Be resolved the Town Board does approve the following 200. 2016 budget transfer from the general fund as follows, and uh, rather than describe it, it's as uh, listed on the uh, motion sheet. So moved. Move, moved by Larry, second by Art. Anything on this question? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? That's approved. Supplemental motion. Yes, then we had uh, several late motions come in, and uh, 
One is, um, a, at least at this point, a request for discussion. I don't know if it, uh, we don't have a formal motion made. I don't know if a board member wants to make one. But is a request by Bergholz Fire Company and Adams Fire Company for traffic light preemption equipment for Six Corners, Niagara Falls Boulevard, Niagara Road, Walmore Road. Moved by Art. I'll second it. Second by Gill. Now, at this point, fellas, this is with us paying the full tab of the almost $24,000. Is that correct? <coughs> we do anticipate getting some casino money through the county, through our legislators, maybe as much as nine or $10,000 to help pay for this. <coughs> uh, we do have assistant chief from Burkholz. What's the value of this, Brian? People should know what's going on. You want to bring that up? <coughs> Here it comes. Okay, <coughs> Mark. Mark. Okay, and you come down and give us a little heads up on what it is you're, s give everybody a heads up on what it is you're seeking to do with this uh, light yeah. at Six Corners. Yes, uh, so the, for the light at Six Corners, uh, currently when we respond um, to the intersections, obviously even with the traffic, we have a lot of issues with, uh, when we come to our full stops, even uh, getting through the traffic, uh, cars still with all the lights don't like to yield, yield for any of the fire companies for us. So earlier this year, you guys approved the intersection light at uh, Boulevard and Ward for uh, St. Johnsburg Fire Company. And what that is, it's the um, intersection light where three of them, three intersection lights turn red and uh, one light turns green. With that particular uh, scenario, we thought, okay, let's take this to uh, six corners for us because with our fire company, we do almost 900 calls and then also Frontier with the mutual aid probably does maybe 150, 200 calls inside of our area. So we want to do every light at six corners. So it doesn't just matter if we're going down Niagara Road. We potentially sometimes will be going, like with me being the chief, sometimes I am uh, I respond uh, even on Boulevard, Walmart Road for my first assistant chief that will come up, or even Frontier, they'll come down Cuba Drive uh, for us. So by getting these uh, flashers, um, we're going to have uh, one intersection green, the four others will turn red. Our big issue, too, is having that turn lane on the boulevard. So we, we get a lot of semis that are coming on the boulevard, making that left-hand turn onto Walmart when you're heading towards uh, car rundum. Um, we'll stop with our engine, and then as we uh, stop at the particular engine, because uh, we'll start to uh, um, take out, like we'll just uh, inch out, there will actually be, there was this year alone, there has been times where cars actually almost hit our engine and we were only going through the intersection at two to three miles an hour uh, for it. So this is a huge uh, safety concern that we have for the safety of our uh, firemen right now. So after you approved the one with St. Johnsburg, we also started talking to uh, uh, Adams and they have a similar issue also at National Boulevard. So what they're looking for is because they do handle a lot of calls in the Shawnee area, the Shawnee Road area, they wanted to get their light uh, taken care of uh, for them also. Okay, this motion at this point, the only one we have is from you at this point. Yeah, it's, it's, it's from us. I basically took the lead for all three of our fire companies for Burkholz, Frontier, and Adams. Adams is included in this? <coughs> yes, they are. Very good. Hmm? Yes, they are. 12, the 12 uh, vehicles that we have include uh, Frontier's vehicles on top of ours. Thank you for your help. Anything, any questions for Mark before we proceed? It's just like, like I said, it's just a huge safety. Um, I don't want to see one of my guys get hurt or ladies. And it's well, there's also a question of timing. If uh, well, Sawyer Gardens had a fire not too many years ago, 10, 12 years ago. Correct. And there's a timing issue if that fire came up there or Wheatfield Towers or somewhere in the mall, you'd need to be able to get there. And a lot of it, too, is our first aid calls. We do, obviously, in our town, we do more first aid than fire. And a lot of times we're in our smaller vehicles, and they just don't see us. And if we can get there and start that uh, CPR, as we know, CPR, early defibrillation, that's what saves life for the uh, real emergencies. And 
every second truly counts for that. How close to the intersection do you have to be before it actually triggers? When I talked to uh, St. Johnsburg, because they just re recently got theirs installed, they hit theirs about at home wire, and then by the time they get to the intersection, then it actually trips. Okay. So what will happen is, as we approach with the fire truck, you will actually have a, um, a, it's a, it's a toggle switch that will have similar that they, that they have, and we'll actually work with, uh, um, they work with the state DOT to kind of try to figure out where to do it. I'm thinking for us, we're going to probably do it where the railroad bridge is, and then it should trip. But obviously, we're going to have to, once we do a couple test runs, we'll know exactly where to uh, trip it. And we're going to obviously do that in all uh, six directions. It doesn't just go red, it's going to go No, red. what happens is once it signals, it still stays green uh, where, where it is for a bit. The computer starts to cycle through, and then that one will start to turn red, make sure all of the other ones are red, and then yours turns green. Correct. Thank you again, Mark. No problem. Okay, anything else on the question? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That's approved. Okay. Any question about Tri Community? Uh, yes, the uh, next motion is to extend the full support by the Town of Weefield to Tri Community Ambulance Service, Inc. to expand its regular operating area to include the Town of Niagara, Town of Cambria, Town of Lewis, and Town of Pendleton. And authorize the town supervisor to execute a letter indicating said expansion support. I'll, I'll go ahead and put this motion in. And I'll second it. Second by Art. I, I, I got a, a, a concern from Cambria. A fireman in Cambria called me and he was concerned because at the time this letter came out, it didn't go to the Niagara County uh, Emergency Manager. Yeah, and uh, he said he said they were going to be an, it was going to be another letter coming out. This is coming from Cambria Fire Hall. Uh, I, I don't know all the deals that they have going on, but they were very concerned. Some of these people called me up and said, what's going on? What do you know about this? Uh, is, is, and I know Patty's involved, or you're involved. Yeah, basically what they're trying to do is Tri-Community has been operating uh, within Cambria's boundaries, within Pegan's boundaries, uh, along with Wheatfield, the town of Niagara, Niagara Falls, and times. They're called in for mutual aid. So basically they're going to put this pen to paper describe those outlining boundaries and that will make them legal and covered in whole. But they I don't think it's it's like some of the laws that we have changed in the comprehensive planning stages. Uh, it's not that we're changing the law, it's just that we're writing everything down in the law that it should be inclusive of. It doesn't mean that they're necessarily going to get the calls. They're not expanding right. out their territory, but if they happen to get a call to go into that territory because nobody else, you know, the regular service is busy, they're covered by their insurance because it's part of their territory. Okay. I believe that's what the theory is. Yep. Uh, anything further on the question? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? That's good. Okay, then there was uh, one more, uh, even later motion uh, from Highway Department, and this one um, I'm going to have to do on the fly, I guess, for Kathy. <laughs> um, it's a motion to approve and accept road length uh, amendments and agree to maintain and repair um, adjustments for the 2016 highway inventory. First one being length side drive, currently 0.41 miles, correction adds 0.34 miles, which totals 0.75 miles. Lakeside Drive goes from Dead End to Jagger Road. Ashwood Drive currently 0.29 miles. The correction needs to add 0.16 miles, which totals to 0.45 miles. Ashwood goes from its Dead End to Schultz Road. And Clescent Drive currently 0.34 miles. The correction needs to add 0.27 miles, which totals 0.61. 61 miles. Pleasant Drive goes from Graydon Drive to Norman Road. Total mileage correction is an additional 0.77 miles for the three town and Wheatfield roads. I'll make that motion. Moved by Larry. Do we have a second? I'll second. Right. Second by Randy. Uh, the state happened to do an audit of our roads and found that the numbers that we had on paper were a little shorter than what they showed. And if we correct that, make that correction, and accept that correction, we get just a little bit more chips money every year. It'll, it'll increase our chips from 65 miles to 68 miles or something to that effect, right? Probably less than that. It's less than a mile. 
So it's it's a minor thing, but <laughs> if we accept it, it's good, <coughs> good for us. Anything else? <coughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> That's approved. Okay, and that is all the motions I have. Yeah, Mike, I take it these things are the things you discussed. Which ones are you suggesting you want to get going right away? Price per day. <coughs> so the maximum would be forty-eight hundred dollars amongst the two projects. Does anybody wish to move these two projects? Perhaps with a not to exceed forty-eight hundred. So moved. Moved by Gill. A second. Second by Art. We've been talking about this for a long time. There's certain things in this building that are getting old and need work. This this is primarily pointing. Um, so motion to approve the two proposals from Strenkowski for uh, not to exceed forty eight hundred dollars. A bit of not to exceed forty eight hundred dollars. Recommended by uh, Mike. Uh, this one doesn't read oh, the Defective joints and repoint areas. Oh, well, that's repointing. Install new brick. Cut out defective joints. Clean off the debris. <coughs> We're basically fixing up brickwork on the building. We want to get it done before winter. Anything else on the question? No, this estimate from Blue Ox. What, what was it? What was this proposal for? This roof or the uh, gym? This is still something that needs to be taken care of. Did you have multiple bids on that? You're only giving us one copy. <coughs> I think we want to get the roof done before winter also, so I'm going to go ahead and make that motion. Do we have a second? We, want to, we don't have approval on the other one yet. Oops. We're there first. I apologize. Let's go back to Strankowski, <coughs> not to exceed $4,800. There is a motion in a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? That's approved. And now I'll go back and I'll make the motion for Blue Ox to approve the uh, $2,200, not to exceed. Do we have a second? I'll second. second. Pick one, Tom. And uh, anything on this question? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? It's also approved. And the other one with the super patch, do we, want to take, do we want to take a couple of weeks to take a look at that? Don't bring me colors. My wife won't let me give a comment on colors. So. Okay, so then we'll hold off on that. Okay, and I do have one more motion. That is correct. Okay. And that is to uh, schedule a public hearing at our next board meeting, October 17th. I'm assuming at 7 o'clock to discuss, have a public hearing to discuss the solar moratorium and a possible extension of that for a short period of time. I'll go ahead and make the motion, but I'll make it at 7.15. We don't have anything else at right? So we'll make that at 7.15. Um, basically, it's just an extension of the existing moratorium. We need a little more time to finish the law. But I do need a second. Second. Okay. Moved and seconded. All, all, anything further on the question? All in favor? Aye. 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 
Any opposed? So we'll have a public hearing at the next meeting. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Oh, that's right. The seven fifteen. Okay. Uh, motions are complete. We'll move on to board members' items. Councilman Howard. I just wanted to remind uh, all Wheatfield residents that Niagara County is uh, holding another uh, household hazardous waste uh, collection event. Um, they usually have like three of these, and this I think this is just a special one that just came up with not a lot of notice. Uh, I, I got an email notice just this, this past week, so they, about a seven-day notice, but this Saturday, October 8th, it's in Lockport, uh, and you either have to go on the county website and uh, schedule an appointment, they're only allowing 400 people, uh, and it's uh, to collect uh, household hazardous waste, it can be you know, chemicals, paints, cleaners, etc. cetera, uh, electronics, but we already do electronics at our highway garage, but if you have uh, then they have paper shredding and some other stuff like that. But uh, you can call their number at 998-8073 uh, or go on their website and you can schedule an appointment on their website. That's all I have. Okay, thank you. Um, Councilman Doucette? I have some correspondence from Adams Fire Hall. They'd like to add Stuart Anthony to their active roster, and I'll make that motion. Second. Second by Larry. All in <coughs> favor? All right. All right. Any opposed? Congratulations to him. Anything else? I have correspondence also from St. Johnsburg Fire Company. They'd like to add John Lapham as a fireman, active roster. Tom Miller is a social member. And they'd like to remove D Dylan Mickler. And I'll make that motion. I'll go ahead and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? That's approved. Mike, I sort of forgot uh, too. I'm, did you have a chance to get a uh, price on the coating on the front of the team center? Uh, <coughs> up along with the coating on the outside of the front of the uh, senior center, on the carport part in the front, it's starting to bubble now, like the moisture is going behind it. And how about the gutters on the team center? Did you ever get a chance? That's all. Thank you. Uh, Councilman Gerbeck. Uh, just one quick thanks to you, Bob. Uh, thank you very much for your assistance in getting the removal of the median on Spice Creek brought before the board. We are grateful for the speed at which the motion was brought forward and approved. The residents of the development as well as the town plowing crew will be happy to see this road hazard removed. Thank you again for your assistance, Bob and Mary Jean Merdell. I don't think anybody's more happy than Paul and his crews for that area. And that is, I have nothing else for okay, report. Thank you. Randy? One thing back to the Walmart Road Bridge. I think we should thank Paul and I know Bridget's uh, husband, Jim. They did a great job on that culvert uh, work and the just being around a neighborhood, I've had people say to me, why don't we have those guys do all the bridges, like Lemke and everything else, as well, there's a little more to it, but uh, Paul, I know you guys were there, and I saw Jim there that day, and your crew was there, everybody involved did a good job, the guide rail, guard rail's nice, I know you got a deal on that, and uh, you told me you saved us a little money with some used guard rail, so...
Thank you, Paul. Is that it, Randy? Yeah. I do have a couple of things. First of all, I passed out a town board budget schedule. I had sent that to you by email a while ago. Uh, as we have one of the meetings is a special uh, meeting and another one is a budget work session, we should approve this schedule or suggest if anybody wishes to suggest changes to the schedule. Um, so I'd like to make a motion that this be our budget schedule for this season. The second special meeting, the one on November 14th, is really a tentative meeting. If we can pass the budget on November 7th, we don't have to have the meeting on the 14th. We must adopt the budget by November 21st. I'll second your motion for the schedule. We moved and seconded. Anything further on the question? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 I think that's approved. Uh, we did a band sale this week. Bond anticipation note. We call them bond sales, but they're not bonds until a little farther down the road. The projects covered by that were the Fairmont improvements, the culverts on Lemke and Eric, the Clusent Drive lift station, and the lift station on Jago Road. The total is one and a quarter million dollars worth of bands. Doesn't mean we have to spend it all, uh, but that's what we would be taking in. Uh, the actual bid came in at 1.2903% from uh, Roosevelt and Cross, I think it was, Ed. And we approved that the other day. So we do have the bonds in place now. And we'll be getting that closed in the about two weeks from today. And we'll have the money in hand probably by the end of the month to be able to pay for bills coming out of those projects. And that's about all I have. We do have a meeting on October 12th, a budget work session.